When you create your Power BI report, it's very likely that you have one or more pages that show the high level overview of your business and then a few pages that go into more detail for a certain business entity like a consumer, or supplier or manufacturer. With drill through, you can select a business entity on the main page and then drill through to one of the focus pages, which already puts all of the details into context for that business entity. Now to perform a drill through, we have three options. The first option is to right click on a data point and then choose drill through and then the page you wanna drill through to. The second option is to use the modern tooltip, which then shows the drill through option when you hover over a data point. And the third option is to create a button that lets you do the drill through, which is very visible for the end user and lets you customize the drill through. And that is what we are going to explore in this video. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. In this channel, I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's have a look at how we can set up a drill through with a button. To set up drill through, we first need a few focus pages or a destination pages for drill through. So in this case, I have one page for channel details. Then I have another page that I'm going to use for product details. And now we are going to create a main page that lets us drill through to one of these two. On the main page, we have a bar chart that shows the sales amounts by manufacturer. And if I would right click on one of the data points, let's say I right click on the bar for Cybrick, then you see there's no drill through option just yet because I need to go first to one of these destination pages. And then here in the field section, you see we have the drill through. And here we can add the fields we want to be able to drill through on. So in this case, I'm using the manufacturer. So I have to go here to my product table and take the manufacturer first and put it here onto drill through. Then for the product details page, I'm going to do the same thing. So also there, I'm going to take the manufacturer and I'm going to put it onto the drill through well. Now let's go back to the main page. So if I now right click on one of the data points, let's say for Cybrick, you see we have the drill through option and we can drill through to either channel details or product details. Now let's choose channel details. And you see the focus page is now filtered on Cybrick and we have a go back button. So if I click on the go back button, it brings me back to the main page. Now a second option that we have is to hover over a specific data point, let's say Cybrick. And then in the tooltip, you see we also have the drill through option. And then from here, we can drill through to one of the focus pages. Now this only shows if you activated the modern tooltip, which is relatively new feature. And to set it up, just go to file, options and settings, options. And then it might be that you still need to go to preview features and turn the modern visual tooltips on. And also here for current file report settings, then here you can also turn on the modern visual tooltips and then click on OK. And then it should show. Now the third option is to create a button that lets you perform the drill through. Now to set this one up, we first have to create a button. So let's go here to the ribbon and click on insert. And we're going to insert a new blank button. And let's put it right below the visual itself. And let's make it a little bit bigger. And now here on the right hand side, we can turn action on. And then as the action type, we're going to have a drill through action. Now here we have to say where it should drill through to, and we can choose either the channel details or the product details or one of the focus pages. So let's say that we want to drill through to channel details. Now then you probably also want to edit the formatting just a little bit. So let's give it a border and let's put some button text in there. So let's turn that on. And then for the button text, we can say, see details. Let's also increase the text size a bit and our button is ready. So if we hover over it, then it also gives you a tooltip to drill through to channel details, select a single data point from manufacturer. So if we first have to click here on Cybrick or one of the other ones, and then hold the control key to perform a drill through to the channel details page. The nice thing with buttons is that we can customize a lot and make things conditional. For example, the button text. So when the button is enabled, then you might want to show something different versus when it's disabled. So to set this up, we can work with measures. So let's create this measure by going here to the field list and create a new measure. Let's call this measure button text. And 
and here we are going to create first a variable to check if there's a valid selection. So if one manufacturer is selected. So here we can have var valid selection is equal to, and to see if there's a valid selection, that means in this case, one of the manufacturers needs to be selected or there needs to be a filter on the manufacturer column. So it's filtered and then let's look for manufacturer. And this will return either true or false. Then we create another variable for the result. And here we can use a simple if statement and we want to check if there is a valid selection. And if there is a valid selection, then we want to return the text. See details for space. And then we can combine that with the manufacturer that is selected. So over here, we can use the selected value function, which returns just that one manufacturer that you selected. And otherwise we want to show the button text, select a manufacturer. Then we can close our if function and return the result. Now we can use that measure for a button text. So select the button, then here under format button, we go to button text. And right next to button text, you see this FX symbol, which means conditional formatting. And here we can use the measure to conditionally show a different thing when it's enabled versus when it's disabled. So we want to format by field value based on, well, the measure that we just created. So over here, we can choose a button text measure. So at the moment it's disabled, select the manufacturer. Now I select the manufacturer and you see, see details for Cybrick shows up. And what if I select more than one manufacturer? For example, let's also select coder. Then the button is disabled. However, it still shows then see details for. So it's not perfect yet. However, we can adjust the measure so that it also takes into consideration this case. So let's go back. And the only thing that I need to adjust here is the condition which makes it then a valid selection or not. So we need to not only check if there's a filter on manufacturer, but maybe we also need to check then if there's only one uh, selected. So it has one value and then manufacturer, close the brackets. And then probably we need to update the text a little bit. So instead of select a manufacturer, select one manufacturer. And now you see when we have two selected, it shows select one manufacturer. If I have one selected, see details for Digiwatt. And if I have none selected, then it just says select one manufacturer. Now the same thing we can do for the tooltip. Now at the moment we are just showing the default tooltip, but maybe you want to customize that as well for the enabled and disabled state. Now also here we can work with different measures that return what we want to show when the button is enabled versus when it's disabled. So let's insert a new measure and let's call this one tooltip text disabled. And here we can return select a single manufacturer. And then for the tooltip enable text, we're going to do the same thing. So let's create another measure. And here we can call this one then tooltip text enabled. And then here we want to return the text, click to see more details for And then here we can put in the name of the selected manufacturer by putting in ampersand and then a selected value function. Now we refer to the manufacturer. So now that we have the two measures set up, we go back to the button and then we go to action. And then under action, we have the text for enable tooltip and disable tooltip. Now we already created measures that we can use for the conditional formatting. So let's use that. So field value based on the field. And then first we have the tooltip text for the enabled one. And then we do the same thing for the disabled one. So now when we hover over the button, we see our custom text, select a single manufacturer. When it's disabled, now I select the manufacturer, hover over it, and now we see, click to see more details for Cybrick. So that is working. However, the destination page is fixed. And what I would like to have is that the end user can first choose the focus page, the destination page, and then click on the button, which brings this person there. Now to set this up, we first have to create a new table with all of the destinations. So an easy way to do that 
is to go to the home tab and choose enter data. Let's rename this table. So instead of table, I'm going to have here destinations drill through. And then we have one column that's going to contain the destinations. And here we put in the name of the destination pages. So we have here channel details, and we have a second one, which is our product details page. Now click on load. And now it loads it to the data model. We have a new table, which we can now use to create a slicer from which the end user can choose the destination page. So let's insert the slicer and put it right next to our button. Now on the slicer, we want to show the destinations. So I go to the new table that we created, destinations drill through, take the destinations field and add it to the slicer. Now let's format it a little bit differently. So here in the format, I would choose single select so that only one of them is selected. We don't need to show the slicer header and maybe I want to have two buttons right next to each other. So I go here to general, vertical orientation, horizontal, and there you go. So now that we have this, let's change the other button a little bit. So I want to have as button text, no conditional formatting anymore, just go, that's enough. Then let's also go here to outline and then round edges, we put up a little bit. So maybe let's put that to 30 and then let's make it a little bit smaller, just like this. And then we're going to put these other two buttons right next to it. Okay, so now we have a slicer, we have a button. Next thing we need is a measure that figures out what is selected from the slicer so that we can use that as our destination page. Now this measure is pretty much similar to the button text measure. So I'm going to copy that over. So let's select it, copy the formula, control C. Now I'm going to add a new measure and I'm going to paste that formula in there. And the things that we want to change here is first of all, the measure name. So this is going to be my drill through destination measure. And here we of course don't want to return text, but here we want to have the destination. Now the destination is not there yet. So let's, add this as a variable destination is equal to the selected value in the destinations column. So now we can use that variable in our if statement. Okay, now the rest stays as it is. And let's now use it for a button. So I'm going to go back to my button, go to action, and here, instead of hard coding the destination, we are now going to conditional formatting where we can format it by field. And the field is going to be our drill through measure. So let's see if this works. Now I'm going to select a manufacturer, then choose the destination, product details. And now I'm going to click on go and it brings me to the product details focus page. Now, Cybrick was selected, so here you see, we see the details for Cybrick. Now, here we can go back with the back button, brings me back, now let's also try it for DigiWatts, channel details, and now let's click on go, and brings me to the channel details for DigiWatts. Now, the beauty of using buttons for your drill through is first of all, it makes it very clear to the end user, but also you have endless possibilities when it comes to the customization. So let's say we have more than one visual. I'm just going to duplicate this visual. I'm going to place another bar chart here. And this is going to show me the total sales by, not by manufacturer, but by stores. Now, if I select a manufacturer from the left visual, then I can perform a drill through. But maybe you wanna make it in such a way that we need to have a selection also for the store. Now let me first change the interactions so that they don't cross filter. So that's a little bit clearer. So I go here to format, edit interactions, turn the interactions off. Okay. So now let's go back to the drill through measure. And the only thing that we need to adjust here is the valid selection check. So we want to check also if we have a filter on the store name. So here we can just type in store name and then add this as extra condition to our valid selection. And maybe you also want to have this part here and has one value. So and has one value. And then also here store name. So now I have one manufacturer selected. You see the button is disabled. Now I select also store button is enabled and I click click on go. 
So using buttons to perform a drill through makes it a little bit more visible for the end user that there is a drill through option. And the big upside is also that there are more customization options. For example, if you want to set up a conditional drill through. I hope this video was useful to you. And if you have any questions, then put them in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then consider subscribing. And I hope to see you in the next video.